Hi folks, Fusion Friday double header. Somebody sent in an email and asked, how would you model a one, two, three block? And I thought, it's actually pretty simple in Fusion 360. Let's take a look. First thing we want to do, new component. We'll name it, one, two, three block. And we'll click the radio button to activate it. I'm gonna hit R, so it'll start a rectangle sketch. And we'll sketch on this plane right here. The top of our part will be two by three inches. So I'm actually just gonna drag a box out. Don't worry about the dimensions and click enter. Now I'm gonna hit the D key for dimension. We know that this is this side here is two inches. So we can type in two, enter. The next side, rather than typing in three, click on two and type times 1.5. That'll make that dimension parametric and we can see we've got a little FX on it like so. We're gonna sketch a circle right, aw right away here. So click C for circle. And again, I'm just gonna sketch it anywhere and it'll be 0.375. Dimension it. We're gonna go over the math of the dimensions at the end of the video for folks that wanna see how you actually do proper alignment. 0.40625 and 0.375. Now, we need to pattern this over and down. We could do it with a sketch rectangular pattern, but I don't think, at least I can't figure out, that that's editable, uh, that we can come back and change our dimensions. So let's do that instead with a um, rectangular pattern over here on the solid model side, which means we're good here. So hit Q for press pull, click on our face here. Now here's a question for you Fusion folks, I'd love to hear it. I want to make this one inch a formula and I can't seem to figure that out. Um, uh, you know, I took a guess and typed like D1, which should be the three inch pattern or two inch divided by two. It didn't, it didn't compute. So, so I'd love to hear, oh, that did work. I had it, uh, that's funny, I had it on the, um, it's case sensitive, I had a lowercase d seem to make it work. So I'd love to hear from the Fusion team how we can make it more easy to pull up uh, prior dimensions to use formulas because now this whole thing is scalable and parametric. That's awesome. Click OK. Now we need to create that pattern. Create pattern rectangular. Objects to select, you need to pay attention. Again, and we talked about this in our other Fusion Friday video of which you're patterning. Faces, bodies, features, or components. We're gonna do a face right now because that's what we've got. A body, I don't think I'm gonna use a ton of to be honest with you. Features would be if you're patterning a feature like a chamfer or a fillet and component is when you've actually got an additional component like in an assembly. So objects, we'll click here. Directions, I'll click this edge and that edge. Uh, Fusion has got me going the wrong direction. No big deal. I'm gonna just change. Um, I, I don't use extents normally. Um, probably useful, but I'm just used to spacing. And I'm gonna, it's three across. And so because the distance is the wrong pointing the wrong way. The easiest is just to enter a negative. So negative 0.59375. Again, we'll go over how we got that at the end of the video. And for the down direction, five quantity and 0.5625. Now here's the really cool thing that I like um, is if you don't want one of these, like let's say we don't want to center one, just uncheck the little box on that one and you get rid of it. Uh, it's very handy. Click OK. We've got our block. Let's go ahead and add a chamfer right now. Uh, modify chamfer. Click these edges. Okay, I can't click the second one. Hold down the control key. That lets you, you're telling Fusion, no, stop, I want to select more. You can select hidden edges. So these two are visible, but this back edge is visible if I just get to the right spot. And likewise, this edge is visible here. So you don't have to rotate your model around. 20,000 is fine. For our side holes, quite simple. C for circle. I want to make sure I'm picking this plane. 
I'll let it snap to the send the width there like that. So drag it over 0.375, hit D for dimension, and this will be the 0.40625, Q to press pull, and I'll select our divot or our circle. And instead of the dimension here, we'll change the, ex just for fun, we'll change the extents to two. And then I don't like this, but you've got a click match shape. I wish it would just default to that. And I can select this face, and then it'll extrude cut over to that face. It, it, it's smart enough to know you're trying to do a cut, but if for some reason you're trying to do a different operation, make sure you take a look at the uh, drop down list here. Click OK. We've got our hole through there. Now we'll do a create pattern rectangular. It's still the same pattern type. We'll click this guy here. Click any x-axis line. And what did we say that was? 0.40625. Oh, I didn't. Hold on. So, okay, I, good, good example. I selected two objects. And I meant to just, I meant to click up here for the line. So hold down control, and that'll unselect the second object that I had here. Now if I click direction, I can click the line, and we should be good. It looks like I've got to change it to spacing, 0.40625. Oops, sorry, that's the wrong one, 0.50. Point five nine three seven five. There we go. And last but not least, this face here. Again, C for circle. Click on the face. I'm going to let it snap to my center line right there, and drag down. Point three seven five. D for dimension. 0.375. You'll notice we talked about this is still blue, and the reason it's blue is that we let it snap to that center line, but we didn't actually create a constraint. Uh, let's see if we can do that. Um, I don't. Let's change back to select. We don't have a point here yet, so if we create a point there, that should snap and now we do horizontal vertical here to here now we've got that black and it's never going to move not necessary not always necessary but FYI Q to press pull if you sometimes just want to do an extrude cut through the whole thing just drag this and go all the way over that works too for this part create pattern rectangular pattern We'll select our object, and I guess I guess you've got to go over here and click direction. Um, it's looking for you to want to pattern extra objects. I don't know how I feel about that, but um, now I've got that selected. This spacing and number of them is five and point five six two five. Click OK. There is our one two three block, folks. Math, it's not that hard. Take a look at this little Excel sheet. We'll have this available to download in the video description below. We have a two inch width part. One, two, three, three eighth inch holes. Slim three eighths. There's four remaining spaces. That's simple. I don't know what you call that. That's just the way the world exists. When you have three holes on a face, you've got one, two, three, four spaces. So the way I did this in Excel is I created a formula here, which is just the number of holes plus one. Pretty simple, right? Which means the space taken up by the holes is 3 times 3 eighths. So you'll notice everything in this Excel file that's an input is blue, and everything that's an output is black. So if 1.125 inches is being taken up by those holes, that means 2 minus that 1.125 means we've got 0.875 inches left of real estate that we need to cover up with those four gaps. So 0.875 divided by 4 means it's 0.21875 is the distance of each one of these little gaps when we want equal spacing. So what's our initial x offset 
And that was the dimension that we used way back in the first sketch, the 4063. It's actually 40625 that's just rounding up uh, one decimal here. Well, that's the point 21875, which is one of our spacing gaps, plus the radius of our 3 8 inch hole. Makes sense? Point 40625. Now, why did we space these out on the pattern, though? We look right here. When we went over, we went over 0.5938, which is actually this 59375. That's because we're doing the each spacing. If you take a look, it includes the gap that we're, we decided was 0.21875 plus it's on center. So we have to take the radius from one hole, which is one, half of three eighths, and the radius of the next hole, which is also half of 3 eighths. So reality is, it's the, the little gap, the 0 0.21875 plus 0.375. That makes sense? So that gives us 0.59375. So here's what's cool about doing it like this in Excel, is if we copy this and we paste it here and we say top to bottom, and let's say it's now a three inch part, so the, the part height, we'll call it, it's three inches high. We're going to figure out the distance for um, the five holes that run top to bottom. Well, we need we have five three eighth inch holes. They're the same hole diameter. Everything just auto populated for us. And so what we see is to space those evenly top to bottom, our initial offset is 0.375 versus a little bit different uh, when we did the X width. And the pattern as we go down is again just a hair different. So, again, video description where you can download this. Hope that helps, folks. Take care. Enjoy your weekend. See you soon.